This is VOA News. Via remote, I'm Marissa Melton. A former associate of Trump lawyer Rudy Giuliani was convicted Friday on six counts related to so-called influence-buying campaign finance schemes. A jury of eight men and four women found Lev Parnas guilty of scheming with co-conspirators to use a Russian backer's money to fund political contributions they hoped to trade for political favor. The Ukrainian businessman was also convicted of using money from Igor Fruman, an associate who previously pleaded guilty, and a fake company to funnel hundreds of thousands of dollars in political contributions to GOP and pro-Donald Trump committees and then lying about it to the Federal Election Commission. Parnas faces up to five years in prison for each of the five counts. A sixth count for falsifying records to the FEC carries a 20-year maximum prison sentence. Co-defendant Andrei Kukushkin was also found guilty on two counts connected to his role in facilitating the campaign donations paid for with his Russian boss's money. Kukushkin's charges each carry a five-year maximum prison sentence. Sentencing for Parnas will likely be deferred given a pending second trial on a second char- on a separate charge. Kukushkin is scheduled to be sentenced in mid-February. U.S. Attorney General Gen- uh, Merrick Garland announced Friday that new measures to fight discriminatory lending practices are being developed. The Justice Department's new Combating Redlining Initiative will redirect federal resources to investigating fair lending concerns, according to the agency. More on that and all the stories we're covering at our website, voanews.com. We've also got an app that you can download. You're listening to VOA News. The United Nations independent human rights expert on North Korea warned on Friday that the country is facing a worsening hunger crisis due to COVID-19 and children, the elderly and prisoners may be at particular risk of starvation. UN Special Rapporteur on Human Rights in North Korea, Tomas Ohea Quintana, told reporters Friday that even before the pandemic, more than 40 percent of people were food insecure in North Korea, with many suffering from malnourishment and stunted growth. Following the outbreak of the pandemic early in 2020, North Korean, Korea closed its border and has strictly enforced it and imposed travel restrictions between cities and regions, leaving people without jobs and goods. In his report Friday to the U.N. General Assembly Committee that deals with human rights issues, Quintana said there are shortages of essential medicines and medical supplies that come from neighboring China. He said North Koreans should not have to choose between the fear of hunger and the fear of COVID-19. He said Pyongyang has joined the global facility for obtaining COVID-19 vaccines called COVAX, but has not fulfilled the necessary steps to receive vaccines through the facility. Iran State TV reported mass Friday prayers resumed in Tehran on Friday after a 20-month hiatus due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The prayers at Tehran University, a gathering of religious and political significance, came as authorities warned of a sixth wave of the coronavirus, which has so far claimed nearly 125,000 lives in Iran. State TV says worshippers had to heed social distancing and use face masks during the gathering, and it reported Friday prayers were also performed in several other Iranian cities. Iran's health minister said earlier this week it was a certainty that Iran would face a sixth wave next week. The warning came even as the country has accelerated its vaccination drive. Ethiopian forces carried out an airstrike Friday on the city of Makele. It was their fifth on the Tigray regional capital since Monday. There were no immediate reports of casualties following Friday's airstrike. A humanitarian flight bound for Makele had to turn back to Addis Ababa mid-flight, the cause of the airstrike, according to a U.N. official. The official said not a single aid truck has been able to enter the embattled northern Ethiopian region since Monday. On Wednesday, U.N. spokesman Farhan Haq confirmed that three children were among those killed in this week's attacks. And once again, you can find all the stories we're covering at our website, voanews.com. Via remote, I'm Marissa Melton, VOA News.